A gospel portion has been placed on an insert in the bulletin and for help for us all to see it together and to hear it together and read with me and if you like, let us hear the gospel. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them a parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to the father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in desolate living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough to spare, but I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and he went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. And he replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatty calf because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I've been working like a slave for you, and I've never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my father. But when the son of yours, but when the son of yours came back, who had devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The word of the Lord.
Eat your heart out. <laughs> I am the younger one. But I want to tell you about my older brother. Or at least the brother I had. The brother who doesn't want anything to do with me anymore. He's called me the black sheep of the family. And indeed, maybe that is the title I deserve. I really did screw it up. And I regret that. But fortunately, I'm back home. I'm with parents who apparently like black sheep. I couldn't believe that my father and mother would be so welcoming after what I had done. And here I am, back home again. But my brother, what can I say about him? I'm really troubled and worried about him. He's what you might call anal retentive. I mean, he just has to have the world his way. He has a sense that the world needs to run like clockwork. Tick-tock, tick-tock, never changing pace. Always the same, day after day after day. Everything has to be in its place. Everyone has to be in their place and do just what he thinks is right and best. That's the size of his world, and I'm worried about him. Let me tell you what I mean. I mean, he, he, this, he's so caught up in time. He sets the alarm, yes, make more sure that he gets up at 6 a.m. every morning, seven days a week. But then he sets the alarm for 9 p.m. to make sure he gets in bed by 9 p.m. every single day of his life, what he says. And he has tons of saying. Something about early to bed, early to rise. What is it? joy and freedom. Get out into the world and experience it. You know what I say? All work and no play makes Jack a no. That's right. You're with me now. Yes, you have to get out and experience life. Yes, the world sometimes can be messy. Yes, sometimes you'll make mistakes, but gosh, that's better than just being so locked in upon yourself and limiting the world and closing down as if all the world had to be just like you. I'm worried about my brother. You should see his room. He's got this shelf where he keeps his books. And as you might think, uh, he takes each book and he lists it by author alphabetically. And he comes in every night and he checks it out. Make sure that it's all, nothing's been touched, particularly by me. And then he has all his trophies and awards. Of course, he's the one that gets the trophies and the awards. And make sure that they're perfectly in place as well. He is so rigid. He cannot deal with change. I'm not sure he's had a new idea since he was born. I wonder sometimes if we're really the same parents. We are so different. So yes, he has not experienced the world as I have. He has no stories to tell and even fewer friends to share with. I don't think he's ever gotten a hundred yards off of the property. Never seen what's around the bend in the wonderful world that's out there. Yes, it's a wonderful world. Yes, you can fall in a pit. Sometimes you end up with the pigs. But you can always come home. You can always begin again. And I hope that for my brother as well.
reached out another brother. That is until he destroyed our family, our reputation, our business. That reprobate, terrible. I didn't trust him as far as I could throw him. If you ever happen to see him on the street, I make sure that I walk on the other side of the street or he'll have his hand in your pocket in an instant. Can't be trusted. He has brought so much shame to us and our family name in this community. What he did is unforgivable. He went to Father and asked if he could have his share of the inheritance. Now he needed to get away and enjoy his freedom. But what he was really saying was, Dad, I want you to drop Dad. <clears throat> because you don't get your portion of the estate until your father dies. Who would do that to their father? He has destroyed us. Nearly took down our business. He, he thinks that money grows on trees. Well, in our business as all growers, they do. But you have to tend to them. You have to stay in there and work the property and do something that brings profit, grows the business, that takes care of it. Who else is going to do that for you? Well, the worst part is that God, I think, Father did do that. He did buy the property. He gave him his third. And what did he do? He went off and spent it all. He went on prostitutes. And then he expects to come back. And that's the bone I pick with my father. Can you believe that he let him come back home? So in his prayer of confession, ha! Huh, you think he really was serious? I don't. I think he's bad rules on my father once again. And all of us, you know, all playing without work makes Jack a toy. If we think we can just run away and do whatever we want as he did, do whatever I want, whenever I want, whatever whom I want to do it with, what will the world be? We know in God we have a straight and narrow path, and if you convert from that, you are left out. God is serious. God wants us to be faithful and true and stay on the line and walk it without turning it in any other direction. And so that's what I want for all of you. To make sure you never part from the principles that we must uphold in God's name. There is right and there is wrong. And there's nowhere in between. He's come back. And I don't trust him. He's come back. And this is not going to be good. Trust me. I know this. I have two sons. 
all I have is theirs for the taking. I have two sons, both bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And I love them both. I have two sons who are struck in their own way to find each other. And I love them both. I have two sons and I'm just dying for them to find each other. So they will come together and we can sit and take them as one family. It's been said that there are two kinds of people in the world. Those who think there are two kinds of people in the world and those who don't. Said there are two kinds of sinners those who know they are, and those who still don't. Crazy love. God help us. Amen.